This video is going to define percentiles, show you how to calculate them, and also define the five number summary of a set of data. A percentile is a number that indicates what percentage of observations in a sample are at or below that particular value. Percentiles are based off of percentages, which means they have to range between 0 and 100. For example, your professor tells you that you scored in the 80th percentile on an exam. What this literally means in terms of the definition of a percentile is that your score was equal to or better than 80% of all other students in the class. 20% of the class did better than you. You did better than 80% of the class. Here's an example of how we calculate percentiles. Let's say we have a small class of 12 students that take an exam and we have all of their scores out of 100. One person scored a 53, one person scored 94, 85, et cetera, down to 67 and 74. What we wanna know is what exam score represents the 60th percentile. So which score represents the score where 60% of the people did worse and 40% of the people did better? The first step in calculating percentiles is to sort the data in increasing order. You always want to have your smallest observation first and your largest observation last. So taking our 12 observations and sorting them, we see that we have 32 was the smallest score, followed by 53, 67, working our way up till we get to 92, 94, and our highest score of 97. Step two in calculating percentiles is finding the location of the 60th percentile. We have our sorted data. We need to figure out how many observations into the data we need to count to find that 60th percentile. The way we do this is by taking the number of observations denoted by n, adding 1, multiplied by the percentile we're looking for, and dividing by 100. In this case, we have 12 observations and we're looking for the 60th percentile. So our calculation is going to be 12 plus 1 times 60 divided by 100, which gives us 7.8. Now, the fact that this is a decimal isn't going to be a problem. We have a, a way that we can handle that. What this is telling us is that the 60th percentile is between the 7th and 8th observations. But since 7.8 is closer to 8, it means that the 60th percentile is closer to the 8th largest observation than it is the 7th largest observation. The third step in calculating percentiles is to find the observation that corresponds to the location in our data set. We already know the location is 7.8. It's between the 7th and 8th largest observations. So the 7th largest observation, counting your way from the beginning, is 81. The eighth largest observation is 85. Since the location of the 60th percentile is closer to the eighth largest observation than the seventh largest, we're going to assign a weight of 20% to the seventh largest and a weight of 80% to the eighth largest. The 80% is coming from the fact that we have a 0.8 in the location, the 20% is what's left over. 8 minus 7.8 gives you 0.2, so the seventh largest observation gets 20% of the weight. Our 60th percentile lies somewhere between 81 and 85. Here's how we're going to calculate its exact value. We take the seventh largest observation, which is 81, and multiply by its weight, which is 0.2. Take the eighth largest observation, which is 85, and multiply by its weight, which is 0.8. Working each of these out, you get 16.2 plus 68, which is 84.2. So the 60th percentile here corresponds to a value of 84.2. Someone who scored 84.2 on their exam would have been better than 60% of the class and worse than 40% of the class. There are three types of special percentiles that are commonly referred to in statistics. The first one is the median, which is the 50th percentile of a data set. 
What this means is that half of the observations lie above the median, and half of them lie below. The next special percentile that we have is the first quartile. The first quartile is the 25th percentile of a data set. What this means is that a quarter of the observations lie below this number, and three quarters of the observations lie above it. The first quartile is denoted by Q1. The final special percentile we have is the third quartile. The third quartile is the 75th percentile of a data set. And of course, this means three quarters of the observations lie below this number, and one quarter of the observations lie above it. The third quartile is denoted by Q3. The five number summary is a very simple, straightforward method of describing a set of data. Like its name implies, there are five different numbers that get included in a five number summary. The first one is just the minimum of your data set. The next one is the first quartile. The third number that we use is the median. The fourth number in the five number summary is the third quartile. And the final number in a five number summary is the maximum of your data set. So if we take our example of a small class of 12 students and their exam scores, we have our sorted data already. We want to figure out what the five number summary is. Well, two of them are very easy to figure out. The minimum is just the smallest observation. So you take a look at your sorted data. 32 is the smallest observation, so 32 is the minimum. The first quartile, which is the 25th percentile, we can find just as we found the 60th percentile earlier. We have 12 observations. We're looking for the 25th percentile. So the location of the 25th percentile is going to be 12 plus 1 times 25 divided by 100, which gives us 3.25. This is telling us that the 25th percentile is between the third and the fourth largest observations. The third largest observation was 67. The fourth largest observation is 71. Since we have this 0.25 as the decimal part of the location, what this is telling us is that it's closer to the third largest observation than the fourth largest. We're going to assign a weight of 0.75 to the third largest observation because it's closer to the third largest and we assign the remaining weight, a weight of 0.25, to the fourth largest observation. So the value of the 25th percentile is going to be 67 times 0.75 plus 71 times 0.25. This gives us 68. Now we could repeat this process for the median and the third quartile, but you've seen a couple of examples. I think you're starting to get the picture of how you calculate percentiles. So I'll just give them to you and you can work them out on your own if you'd like to verify it. The median, which is the 50th percentile, is going to be 78. The third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, is 91. And then the final number in our five number summary is just the maximum of our data, the maximum is equal to 97. So to summarize everything and writing out our entire five number summary, we have a minimum of 32, a first quartile of 68, a median of 78, the third quartile is 91, and the maximum is 97. To finish this off, I just want to give you two more terms that are very closely related to the five number summary. The range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum observations in a data set. The interquartile range, which is much more commonly known as the IQR, is the spread of the middle 50% of the observations in a data set. The way we calculate the IQR is by taking Q3, which is the 75th percentile, and subtracting off Q1, which is the 25th percentile. If we take a look at our exam example, again, we have our sorted data from 32 to 97. We have our five number summary, 32, 68, 78, 91, and 97. We can calculate the range by taking the maximum observation, which was 97, and subtracting off the minimum, which was 32. 
This gives us a range of 65. We can do a very similar thing for the IQR. The IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 91. Q1 was 68. So the interquartile range, or the IQR, is equal to 23. Now it turns out that the IQR is actually much more useful than the range. We'll see exactly why in class. There is a lot more that we can do with the interquartile range and the five number summary. Again, we'll take a look at the different things that we can do with this data in class.